everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Sports Point, brought to you by Pointer Studios. I am your host, Jacob Spurl, and joined here to my left are my co-hosts, Alex Proctor, Brody Kubski, and Liam Stats. How are you guys doing today? Dude, it was a great weekend. I, I had a really great time. Mateo can tell you that. Uh, Liam, how about you, buddy? Uh, I had a, a weekend. At least you didn't say you were dead inside this time. That's, that's a little bit. I'm never dead inside. I love no. sports. Yeah, surely. Yep. Alex, we, how you doing? Uh, good. We got hockey starting today. Yeah, we do. Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah. Yep. 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 yeah by yep. the way, Sabres already lost, so. Do they really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll get into it. We'll get into it. All right, we'll get into it then. Let's start off with our first segment of the show, crowning champions. Uh, my champion, I'm crowning this week. We're going to talk about him later, but I, I couldn't help it. Xavier McKinney is just going nuts. Not only does he have five picks for each one of his first five games of the season. Not only does he have six turnovers this season, but he is the first player since 1970 to record an interception in each of his first five games with the team. So if he gets six, it'll be the first time it's ever happened? I'm pretty sure. Well, also, I think it's a record right now because his last game with the Giants, he got an interception. So that's six in a row. I think six that's straight. A, I think that ties a record. Okay. So... All around great things. We'll get more into it later. The defense is finally good, and I might have shed a tear. It's about time. <laughs> Liam, mm. what do you got for us? Uh, well, my crowning champion, but actually, in fact, it is Alex Proctor's crowning champion, is uh, the New York Jets for firing Robert Sala. And we will talk about it later. Yeah, He's we giving will. me the death glare, but we'll talk about it later. Yeah, we'll definitely. We, I have some thoughts on it. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it more later. Brody, who's yours? Vanderbilt football. Yeah, baby! Vanderbilt football. That's my school. Taking down the emperor. Roll Beating Commodores. number one Alabama on Saturday, 40 to 35 at home. The fans went went and tossed the goalposts in the Cumberland River in Nashville. It's the first win against an AP top five opponent in school history. Wow. They were 0 60 before this. <laughs> Haven't beat Bama in over 40 years. It is truly awesome to see, and uh, it makes me feel better that. Um, Bama lost. The entire time in the Nick Saban era, Vanderbilt only recorded like 13 total points against them. And they got 45 they, or 40. They got yeah. 13 in the first quarter. They got 13 in the first quarter, 45 total. So uh, seeing 3,000 fans carry a goalpost through the streets of Nashville and toss it into a... <laughs> Did they get fined $100,000? Yes. But Who they're actually, cares? They're actually doing a um, <laughs> kind of like a charity thing where um, they're selling memorabilia from the game. Like, I think footballs, helmets, part of the goalposts. Seats, just to pay yeah. off the fine. I mean, I'd watched Alabama play a couple games this year. They still looked pretty good without Saban, but that that's that's absolutely insane. They were also like throwing temper tantrums the whole game yes. too. That yes. was that's, crazy. That's they, you, you never would have flown with Saban. No, no. Saban would have been out there on the field going, "You got, you're sitting, you're sitting, yeah. you're off the team." Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, that'll take us right to our next segment: the three-point try campus roundup. We are sponsored by Point Brewery, and this month's flavor of the month is Point Premium Root Beer. So all of us, we're gonna we're gonna have a have a drink. Fellas, before we open this, let's take the over or under that Brody opens it today in one go. Alex, no, without we, yeah, yeah, yeah. You ready? Oh, we opened it. We opened it. I didn't even. I didn't even get soft hands, guys. <laughs> the soft hands return. I just gotta use my jersey, you guys. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, my sport that I'll be covering around campus is women's volleyball. So we beat lacrosse this past Friday. Uh, we won three to two, so a bit of a closer matchup. We moved to three and zero on our conference, the WIAC, and right now we're in first uh, in conference standings, which is, is pretty, pretty nice. Um, up next is the Papa John's uh, Invitational in Stevens Point. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a fun name. The um, Papa John's Invitational, Papa yes. Papa John's Invitational. Uh, yeah, just in, just in case if anybody didn't know. Um, on Friday, October 11th, we'll be playing Augustana College. Uh, that's from Rock Island, Illinois. A classic right there. <laughs> then on Saturday, oh, dang, was it, was it that funny? Uh, on Saturday, October 12th, We'll be playing Wheaton College from Wheaton, Illinois, another classic Illinois town that I know. <laughs> and now uh, Ashley Kopp is up to 295 kills on the season. That is awesome. So uh, soon this weekend we'll probably get over 300. So great to see women's volleyball keep powering through the season. Excited to see how they do come playoffs. Heck yeah. You're up, brother. I'm up now? Yeah. I never go this early. Well, now, you, um, now you do. <laughs> I have football. We yeah. had our homecoming game slash Spud Bowl against Stout last Saturday. 
Uh, and it was a loss, and um, we did get scored on on the very first play of the game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they started on the 48-yard line, and it was a 48-yard touchdown pass, which crushed my soul. Absolutely crushed my soul. I, I didn't knew. think I was. That was rough. It was a good like play action play, but I was like, he was wide open. Yeah, it, it I was nobody close. But um, which, by the way, you guys said it very good for that. So I mean, good, thank good you. Yeah. yeah, the two point conversion play. Lear will line up under center. He takes the snap on the play action. Lear rolling to his right, looking, firing. It is caught. Oh. He is in. Are you kidding me? What a catch. They get it for two. What a grab. Oh, oh my. <laughs> I'm saving that call in the books. That that was that was nuts. I cannot Whoa. believe that happened. Uh, we did lose 22 to 15, so not a bad loss. Mm. We lost by it's one close touchdown. One. Yeah. Close one. Uh, bad. Jake Lear, 16 for 27 with 166 yards, one touchdown, but one interception. Uh, Charlie Smith did fill in late. I didn't see. Is it because of an injury or just? Yeah, Lear got hurt when okay. he got tackled, and I think Smith did a really good job. Yeah, he four seven as a backup. Uh, four for seven, 54 yards, and a touchdown pass, but also another uh, interception. But I mean, four for seven. That's, yeah, that, that's I mean, good. that was a desperate. It was the yeah. end of the game, like, and like it's it's why not? You yeah, know? yeah. Like, I really wouldn't hold that one against right. him. Uh, Bryson Cashin looked a little better. He's still struggling as of recently. Yeah, he does have uh, yards in on double digits this time. Thirteen attempts for thirty one yards. Uh, Miles Gallagher, he's just the offense. I don't. There's really no other way to describe him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, six receptions, 83 yards, one touchdown. It did take until the fourth quarter for the pointers to score. Uh, the defense did hold the Blue Devils to a bunch of field goals. Great red zone defense. Yeah, they were. They stay I gotta up on say the that's too. probably the best defense I've I've seen. Uh, what about you? That you've seen your entire three years. I would say probably. Years. It's yeah. been a while since I've seen like a really good defense. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, five total field goals for Luke Cool. By the way. Luke Cool. Luke Cool. Hell of a name. Yeah. That is exactly. a great name. Yeah, cool especially man. like, Luke. you got to say cool when you're kicking field goals. Cool. Uh, our next game uh, is against this Saturday out in Eau Claire at 1 p.m. And, fellas, I've got to be honest with you. Eau Claire is the last WAG team I feel we're like gonna we're going to beat them. I'm we, actually confident. We, we gonna, have to. We, I, Otherwise, I, I, it's not happening. We're going to beat them. Okay. We're going to have two wins on the air. Or more. I'm just... We're gonna, we're gonna be at least two. We're gonna have at least two. We're gonna have at least two wins. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yes. As long as they win a Wyatt game. But it'll be the first Wyatt game if we win. It'll be the first Wyatt game that we've won since 2019. Yep. I was a sophomore in high school. Exactly. Whoa. It's, it's wow. been a while. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. I guess that that takes us. Who's who's next? I guess I'll take it. Sure. This go. guy. Yeah. Um, so I, I chose cross country. Um, men's cross country competed at the Running of the Cows, uh, hosted by Carlton College uh, in the men's 8K. They took third out of 21 teams. Uh, there's some WIAC schools there, including um, River Falls and Platteville that Point actually beat, so that's awesome. Uh, they were led by sophomore Logan Murphy, who finished fifth with a time of 25 minutes and uh Point or fifty milliseconds, whatever the uh, dang um, counting is there. And then women's cross country also competed at the running of the cows in the women's six k. Uh, they took seventh out of twenty one teams, led by senior Rachel Kraus, uh, who finished twelfth with a time of twenty three or twenty two forty nine fifty. Uh, she also went to nationals the past few years, so she's probably she's been the top runner for the uh, pointers for the last few years. So congrats to her. Uh, next meet for both teams is the Gene Davis Invitational at Reed Municipal Golf Course in Appleton, Wisconsin. It's uh, hosted by Lawrence University, and that's this Saturday. Heck yeah. I really forgot that they use golf courses for cross country sometimes. Oh, yeah. I, I, didn't, to I didn't even courses. know that. Yeah, be it's, I mean, but you, it makes sense, right? You yeah. know, because, yeah, it's like the, the, the pass and all that stuff. All I, the, you just kind of terrain. It, it, yeah, it, gives, it gives a bit of uh, challenge to the runners going on golf courses sometimes, uh, depending yeah, on the golf Yeah, you know, course. when somebody shanks, you know, one wide right, and you got to dodge all of the golf balls. Oh, yeah. In, but, you know, Alex, you had a point, I think. Um, no, I had I didn't know that they ran on golf courses either. Uh, but it does make sense just yeah. how large the uh, we learn something the every, area is. every day, the especially more you know. know. Yeah. As, as somebody whose brother ran cross country. Reese Cubs convention. There yeah, it is. My brother ran cross country till his sophomore year of college, so I'm so used to going to his meets and. Many golf courses I've been to that I've never been to before. So my mom used to be a cross country runner for the team here at Point. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, nice. All right, well, that'll take us to 
Alex, what do you got for us? I got hockey. Um, our first UWSB hockey update of the year. Uh, the season is right around the corner. We have an exhibition here at home at the Willet, October 25th against Marion, 7 p.m. Um, I'm sure there's going to be more information to come out about that and. You play for week the, or two. Do you play for the hockey team? <laughs> <laughs> no, Alex, are you a, are you a hockey player? Sometimes. Do you, do you one, one might say yes. Sometimes. <laughs> he'll, he'll indulge every once in a while. I'm, I like to dance. Um, How does your beer league team do? <laughs> <laughs> um, yep, so that should be exciting. Uh, first look at hockey and look at um, some of the freshmen, you know, I some of the new faces. I can't wait. Like, I can't. Um, the Pointers will be playing in the Key City I'm Classic so excited. to start the season, which is going to be in Dubuque, Iowa, November 1st and the 2nd. It's going to basically be a mini tournament of <coughs> us, the University of Dubuque, Augsburg, and Aurora. Um, Shout out Augsburg. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> you know why. That's going to be insane. So we're going to play Aurora on the 1st at 3 p.m. The winner of us versus Aurora... And the winner of Augsburg versus Dubuque will play each other on Saturday, and the losers will play each other on the Saturday as well. Okay. So they, they count as regular season games. Okay. Yep. I was yep. going to yep. ask that. So, so okay. the nice. second game will be determined on. Point will win them all. That's all that matters. That's, that's the hope. That's the hope. <laughs> yeah. That's the reality. Um, super excited about Pointer Hockey being back. I'm excited to get back in the net, start playing again. And oh, so he does play hockey. <laughs> oh, oh, we might say he wow. does. And <laughs> we should have a super, super fun season. So awesome. I'm excited. For We're that. all so excited. I mean, that. have we mentioned on here that Peyton Hart transferred from Stout to? I don't know if we have. Can, 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 why? Why not? Yeah. He's here. I Give mean, us the report. I mean, we have. I, I don't know what you want me to say. Leading huh. goal scorer. I guess how many? How many new guys do we have on the team this year? Thirteen. Oh boy. Yeah, well, we had eight seniors graduate. I know, you told me that. Wow. Eight seniors? Yeah, it was 11. It was 11? Oh, that was 11 or 12 of them. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we, had, we had 12 seniors, 11 left. Yeah, but, who so, stayed? Pulius. But youth can be a good thing, as we've seen in examples of professional sports, like the, like the 2023 Packers, because they don't know what losing is. So sometimes they just play free. I, that's yeah. what I believe. Honestly, Dawson Serino <laughs> plays free all the time. Have you ever seen him? His skate. Oh, yeah, you should watch Dustin. I can't wait. Right. Have you ever watched the Pointer Hockey game? Yeah. Oh, okay, I was good. at the Augsburg okay. one, the quadruple overtime. It went past oh, midnight. Yeah, buddy. So was I. Yeah, that was yes. one of the oh. all That oh. was, yeah, that was honestly Oh, you don't, you don't know. He just, he, I've, didn't, I've never told him about it. No, you have. Have or I? I think Brody's told me. I mean, you can I've definitely told Come you. on, story time on the show. Let's hear it. Okay, so that was the first NCAA tournament game I've ever called. Good time, by the way. I really enjoyed doing that. I was that. not at the game because I unfortunately had a choir concert that day, and I was <laughs> it's the worst thing ever. Um, oh. So, you know, it gets into the third overtime, and it's like 12, very, it's a very long 30 night. in the morning. I had been there a while. You yeah. Know, I'd been there for like oh, eight, I do remember seven this. Seven and a half hours. I think Frankie told me. Let's hear it. So there are a couple words you can't say on the air. Not gonna say them here because that would be bad. Because but you can't say them on the show either, obviously. Obviously, I didn't definitely did swear a ton during the first couple episodes of last year's show. I don't know what oh, you're talking about. So you slipped one out during the broadcast. Uh, yeah, it but it happen. was it was uh, uh, f dash dash dash. You really can't say that one over the air. And the SEC, like the next day, sent the thing into the station going, "You have to suspend him." Say so the SEC. The F, the FCC. Oh, I was gonna say. Oh wow. yeah, the SEC. Alabama. I was, was gonna say. Yes, dude, wow. man, they were mad. <laughs> you know what? It was it was such a crazy experience. Uh, it really was watching the puck almost hit the roof, just barely, just barely not miss it. Come like I'd only been just... watching hockey for like a month or two, and that is still one of my favorite like sporting event memories of my entire life. Fun That's hacking, no man. joke. It was such. Moment. It was such a great game. Anyway. That'll, that'll do us in for the three-point try campus roundup. Let's, let's go next to the NFL update. So first off, the Packers, through the first five weeks of the 2024 NFL season, we're now 3-2. and two. Uh, We're back above 500, so that's good. The Packers just coming off, beating the Rams 24-19. to 19. This, is, this was our first game at SoFi in Inglewood, California. And honestly, not <laughs> unsurprisingly, it sounded like a home, home crowd in there. It was really... Packers really loud. Fans travel well, man. Yeah, yes, they do. Yeah, Packers 
Packers fan base is one of the best traveling fan bases in American sports around the world. Um, and a lot of people automatically gave us the win because the Rams didn't have their st star receivers, Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua. But I was also trying to say our team was also very injured. Um, our, I would argue top two of our three receivers. Christian Watson was out because he was hurt. Romeo Dobbs was suspended, and I'm not going to talk much about that because I think there's a lot of information that, that we, we don't, don't know. We don't know yet. And I mean, on the service level, it makes sense, but I do agree that there's not, that might be some that's not. There's just stuff that we don't know, that. so I don't think I, I don't even really think we're going to talk about it. And then also Devontae Wyatt, who is our sack leader, and Jair Alexander, who is by far our best corner right now. Both of them are out. So we had some key pieces missing here. Uh, luckily, though, uh, the Packers have been – they played a lot better in the second half, in my opinion. That One of those first throws of the game, that deep, that deep pass to Jaden Reed was absolutely sensational. Now, the I weird – right in, by the way. When I tuned in, that's the first thing that I got to see. And so. were you jumping up and down? I was. I was – I couldn't. I was at work. So I was basically just like <laughs> – <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was such a great play. And the offense looked a little rusty again in the first half. But without that weird, goofy pick six that Love threw, trying to, trying to avoid a safety, overall we played a really solid game. We played, once again, uh, much better in the second half. Our second half of football these last couple of weeks have been really impressive in my opinion. And speaking of impressive, Tucker Craft, in my opinion, is looking like arguably the best tight end in football. Do you guys agree or disagree? I feel like there's a certain level of bias, but I would agree with that. There is some bias, and I can. that's why I said arguably, because I understand guys like George Kittle are playing pretty well. Um, Dallas Goddard, the Eagles just had a bye week, but he's been playing pretty well. Ferguson's but also not bad. Yeah, Ferguson, Jake Ferguson. Ferguson is solid. Badgers legend, by the way. Absolutely. But the reason why I say that, um, Tucker Craft is, was not our starting tight end heading into this season, obviously. And he's leading right now the NFL in yards after catch rating uh, with 11.8 yards after the catch. That is insane. Crafty Yak and Cheese. Yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> been, he's been playing really well. And another shout-out to a player that's been playing really well is a rookie safety out of Oregon, uh, Evan Williams, who we got in the fourth round. He, he came up to play this, this uh, past weekend. He was at safety because they moved, they moved Keyshawn, who typically plays slot corner, to... Uh, as a regular corner, and they moved Jam Javon Bullard, our other rookie safety, to play slot corner. So then we had to fill in that safety position and have Evan Williams play that. And he played, I think he played really great, smart, fast football. And it's just something that, we, something that you just really want to see with a young guy, especially with a, a, such a kind of growing up, kind of like young team. It's good to see all these players playing well. The only thing I will say in terms of issues is the low, the low pass rush rate. What are you looking at? Uh, my computer just died, so... Who? Hmm? What? My computer just died. Oh, you your look, computer? Yeah, I thought oh you said God. Mike Beaver. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, who is that? <laughs> no, it was some other hockey yeah, player. Yeah, you know, I hockey know. legend Mike Beaver. Yeah, I would have I would have been like, yeah. I've anyway, um, the issues for the Packers this year so far are low pass rush rate. I love... Rashawn Gary to death, but he has done almost nothing this season. It's been brutal watching him. Preston just... Smith also been disappointing to start this season. So, I mean, honestly, if we get our pass, if we fix something with our pass rush, and if guys like Jair can stay healthy, I think we're going to get dangerous come as the season goes on. But it's early, so we'll see what happens. As for the rest of the division, the NFC North remains the best division in football. It's the only division in football where every team is above 500. Um, right now, we're currently tied with last uh, with the Chicago Bears. Yeah, well, the Lions thought they were going to get off easy this year. They thought uh, yeah. they were going to get off easy. This whole easy. division is really, like, no one's a bad team. I really kind of hate that Sam Darnold is, is undefeated. That kind of I, I saw a um, kind of the records of each uh, NFL division. NFC North, 14-5. 14-5 wow. is insane. Wow. My voice has changed because of the root beer. Magical <laughs> properties. I, I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, these next couple of weeks are definitely must-win games, as I said last week. Um, next week we got our uh, – or this upcoming game, we're taking on a feisty Arizona Cardinals team at Lambeau Field. I believe we're going to win it. Um, it's just we especially need Jair back to cover – Rookie wideout Marvin Harrison Jr. He's been having a great rookie season so far. So as long as we got John Money to cover him, I think we should be okay. Before we go on to this other NFL news, I do want to talk about the, the Pittsburgh Badgers. 
Uh, because what? the Pittsburgh Steelers, there's like there's so there's many so Badgers, many Badgers players on the. I think there's like seven at this point. A lot of them are on their defense. Besides, yeah. Yep. So uh, specifically, Nick Herbig and uh, he TJ played. Watt, he played a great game. He played great games, and they combined for attack for a sack and a strip like like a fumble. They like, a fumble. Recovery. That combined sack gave TJ Watt uh, his 100th sack in his career, and that he's one of the fastest players ever to get 100 sacks. Yep. So. He, is the sec- he is the second fastest player. Who was faster, JJ or no. Lawrence Taylor? No. Bruce Smith? No. Reggie White? I can't believe. There you go. I was about to say, I can't believe. Okay, that you didn't okay. Know that. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Who do you think? You think about who the is goat. the best defensive player of all time? Reggie White. Uh, I'm going to die on that hill. Uh, no matter Lawrence what. Taylor. No, no, no. no. Reggie White's by far the best defensive end to play in the game. Yes. That's a debate for another day in other NFL news. <laughs> as we kind of talked about on the top of the show, now former. Uh, New York Jets head coach Robert Sala. He was fired just this morning as of recording. I didn't even know that until you told me about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of, I don't know. My thoughts on it, personally, I think he's the scapegoat for someone else. Whether that's, in my opinion, <laughs> probably Nathaniel, Nathaniel Hackett, um, who I think is, is absolutely well, they, not good at his they job. Thought or Aaron Rodgers. Um, Sala was going to fire, or not fire Hackett, but like demote him to uh, not call him plays and they're going to. Uh, promote somebody else, but then and that might have saved his job. Yeah, I think per, I think another reason why the firing happened is because I think the biggest pro of all this is Sala was losing the locker room, and you can't have that with a team that's trying to com- compete with the Super Bowl. So, um, but yeah, I don't know. I think Nathaniel Hackett, anywhere he's been, including the Packers, was just not good at his job, and he is like so. I don't know if you knew this or not. He was the head coach for the Denver Broncos not this past year, <laughs> but the year before, <laughs> one of the worst. Coaches I've ever seen oh didn't know how to God. manage a clock, didn't know how to call any play calls besides like a, a five. So how did he get any of these jobs? And because he, he, because he started as an offensive coordinator oh. with the Packers when Aaron Rodgers was in his MVP year. Okay, yeah. but that's just and Aaron Rodgers. And another personal reason why I think he got hired was because the Broncos wanted Aaron Rodgers, but he decided to stay yeah. with the Packers for another year. That's a whole other thing. We're putting our tinfoil hats on here today. A lot of theories. So oh, another theory, another theory. Oh, I just saw this this just morning. A theory. I just saw it this morning. But uh, since you know, Robert Sala. Sports was, point. Yeah. Theory. <laughs> <laughs> since Robert Sala was fired. Get sued. Um, oh yeah. Sala was the best man at Matt Lafleur's wedding. He worked with Jeff Halfley in San Francisco. Sala coming to Green Bay in some kind of consultant role is not out of the realm of possibility. This is from Zach Cruz on Twitter. I will say this. this. I think Sala is a great defensive coach. Oh, okay. All of a sudden, it's he's the no, 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 he no. Was no. A great, he was a great defensive coach in San Francisco. He, I was going to say, he was the defensive for coordinator for the 2019 San Francisco 49ers, oh, a team that okay. we played twice that year and lost to poorly oh, twice. Yeah. One so, of those was in the, the NFC. NFC Championship yeah. game. I hated that game. But so did I. Because I watched that field goal goal, and I'm like, that's it. That's My dreams are being Shattered. Yes. Wisconsin teams are cursed, man. And we'll not, get, we'll not, get into it later, too. Not the <laughs> Packers. 13 championships. Anyway. Uh, when's the last one? 2010. And, how, and how, many, how many opportunities have we had? We're going to win it this year. So it doesn't even matter. We're, we're, going, we're, to we're, going, to <laughs> we're going to the Super Bowl this year. Packers gone to Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to leave it off to the last part of the segment, the primetime picks. Alex, I'm going to have you pick first. Last week, you picked the Buccaneers to win. And unfortunately, the Falcons okay. came back and I won mean, it overtime. It was a good. But nobody pick. expected the Falcons it, to do that. It was that. a good pick, but right now you're nobody Owen. expected Kirk Cousins 500 yards. Nobody and did. four touchdowns. But right now, Alex is 0-1 on the year. You can redeem yourself now. This Thursday night football game, it is 49ers at Seahawks. Who are you picking? Um, I picked the Seahawks if they had the Legion of Boom. They, they don't. don't. Mm. They don't. I'm going to go with our captain, Andrew Pulius. I'm going with the San Francisco 49ers. That's right. He's a Niners fan. All right. All right. That's, a, that's a good pick. Then oh. that'll take us to the Sunday night football game. This one doesn't sound great, but legitimately, honestly, could be kind of good. And it's Bengals at Giants. Brody. <laughs> Mac Jones you? starting. Mac Jones? Mac Jones. Sorry, not Mac Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones. <laughs> Daniel Jones. Okay. Daniel Jones post week one has been playing kind of good. He has is, been a little bit better. He's been, I forgot that. I, I don't know why my brain auto-corrected the Mac Jones. It, they're both just, last names are Jones. Maybe so, he's yeah. just on the mind for some reason. They're just basic white quarterbacks. Come on. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, creative players. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, this one's tough. Uh, because the Giants have been playing good re- lately, they just beat the Seahawks yeah, the uh, in Seattle. Um but the Bengals, I feel like because they, they've lost 
this many games while playing really good. They just lost to the Ravens this past week in a really, really great game. Yeah. Um, I feel like I feel like they're gonna want to win this game desperately to save their season. So I'm gonna pick the Bengals just because they've been playing so well. I like it. I don't trust their defense that well, but I, I like the pick. I agree. And I forgot to mention this, but you picked uh, ooh, who's in it? Cowboys. Cowboys. You picked the Cowboys to win, and they won in the final seconds of one of the longest games I've ever well, seen. Well, it's because it got delayed because of uh, storms in Pittsburgh, and it was starting at like 8.45 or something, and they didn't get done till yeah almost 2 a.m. But yeah, you started the year, now you're 1-0, so let's see how this continues. And Liam, you also started 1-0. On you gave me a... You a, picked the Chiefs, of course you picked... Come on. It's hard no, I'm just kidding. It's, I'm just I mean, kidding. it's like, as much as I hate the Chiefs... Everybody knew they were going to yeah, win. Yeah, so you picked I mean, right this this week for Monday Night Football. You get to pick Bills at Jets now with no longer Robert Sala as the head coach. Bills. Jacob would really agree with that pick. Yeah, he I loves himself from Josh Allen. He lo- loves himself. Josh from Allen did not teams. play well this past week, but I think that we are going to have to go with the Bills. Huh? All right, so everybody did not pick the home team, so I find that interesting. But it makes yeah, sense. It makes sense. The Jets are. Um, I'm sorry, the New York Packers are, are going <laughs> to not Thank know you. how to really navigate. I mean, because who's their interim head coach? Have they already hired Albrecht, anyone? Uh, Albrecht, Jeff Albrecht or something. Yeah. yeah, he's their defensive coordinator. I think he's pretty solid. I think he's solid. A lot better of than Hackett. Like, a lot of people Who can't like attack it. So. Dang, sorry. I just He's got a lot of opinions about this, don't he? All right, that, that'll, let's, let's cut off the <laughs> NFL segment. Let's move us to the MLB update. Brody, give us the news. Gonna start he kept it to <laughs> at least... One page this time. We need to give him props for that. He kept it to a page. Let us mourn, Liam. <laughs> so the Brewers lose in the playoffs after bringing it to a game three in the wild card. I hate you, Devin Williams. Game two you. was incredible with clutch home runs by Jackson Trurio and Garrett Mitchell. Devin Williams was locked down in the ninth. Flash forward a day after. Game three started out great with Tobias Myers dealing on the mound. Uh, two big home runs from Jake back Bowers. To back to back. Yep. Back-to-back home runs from Jake Bowers, who pinch hit for um, Reese Hoskins in the seventh inning. And Sal Freelick got a home run uh, to give life to the Brewers in the seventh. very next pitch, too. I know. And the ninth inning rolls around with Devin Williams on the mound. You think it's a lockdown inning. Awesome stuff. They get runners on first and third, and you think, okay, they already got one out. Ground ball, double play, game over. Let's pack up and go. But Pete Alonzo comes up and crushes a three-run home run to right field to... Kill all their hopes. It got the, so quiet. The whole stadium went silent. Like I, Mateo can even tell you, he was at the game, and oh, it went right. completely silent. I wasn't able to see the end of the game. I was at shout out young Will it was just Freeman. Silent. We were we were watching like this experimental like film thing. It was pretty cool, but my phone was blown up, and everyone's like, "I'm depressed." And my my and other words. My group chat. Everybody in there was just like, "Well." It sucks, yeah. yeah. It, and uh, to hurt us more, uh, Jesse Winker get, got on base by getting uh, hit by pitch, which honestly he probably leaned into it. It wouldn't shock me at all. He and then really he scored after Jesse a double. Winker. So I don't uh, like Jesse Winker is dead to Milwaukee more than he already was. Yep. Yep. Didn't he get traded? No, he signed. No, uh, it, no, he signed he in the. If there was an ever an opportunity season. where you could come on Sports Point, we wouldn't have you. <laughs> no, I agree. I wouldn't. Oh man. Uh, <laughs> the Brewers oh, failed to score in the ninth inning after getting a man on base and lost. Uh, it's a heartbreak every single year. Makes me want to cry. We're but, cursed. So what is next for the yeah, Brewers? Some off-season moves. Uh, we'll probably get into it later. But will Adamas stay? Will we got Will Adamas him. stay? I he's hope worth, they do. He's worth so much money now. I know. He's insanely worth so much money. And just cope with the, the rea- reality that this team may be cursed. What do we call it? Everybody has a curse. You know, there's a curse of Babe Ruth. There's a curse of the great Babe Ruth. What, what's ours? We're oh, the no, curse no. of formerly being the Braves, and now we're... No. No. I don't want to... I, like, I thought popped in my mind, but I don't want to call it as like the Bob Euchre curse. Oh, don't like say that. that. Yeah, exactly. Come on, man. He's, they, he may have just called his last game ever. I know. Dude, and it's depressing as hell. All you right, know, Brody, give us give us the MLB playoff picture. I don't even want to talk about the Phillies versus the Mets, though. Well, okay, so the playoff picture after that, the Phillies are playing the Mets. The series is currently tied 1-1. to Actually, it's not, but I'll get into it later why it's not. Um, the Dodgers play the Padres. Uh, the series won. is also currently tied 1-1. to They play tonight after we film. 
Uh, the Guardians versus the Tigers Ser- series is also currently tied one to one, and uh, they play ne- uh, this upcoming Wednesday. Go Tigers! Uh, the Yankees also are playing the Royals, and the series is currently tied one to one. And that's the first time ever that all the series are tied at the same time until tonight when uh, the Mets just beat the po- or Mets just beat the Phillies seven to two. Jeez! So they play Wednesday. Well, it's um, how it goes. Whoever beats the Brewers, same thing. Be yeah, in the World exactly. Series. Exactly. It's. The last nine yep. times that that's happened, Jacob. It's, yeah, I know. They probably will. They're no, red hot. Every, it's every single time. I think um, is, it, is it been every single time? They they either make the World Series and lose, or they make the World Series and win. Every single time that you beat the Brewers in the postseason, you, you make the World you Series. You will make the World Series. It's okay. The Packers are going to win the Super Bowl, so we're okay. <laughs> exactly. Um, for the first time since 2006, <laughs> both New York teams have made the divisional <laughs> series. Truly great for the city of New York. Small market teams are probably seething, like. Us, will they both advance? I'm personally praying on both their downfalls. It'd be hilarious. Mad. Oh. I, he asked me what seething meant. Yeah, it means I, mad. Thank you. And uh, to round this out, um, some teams are being dropped by Bally Sports next year. Um, four teams are being dropped, including the Milwaukee Brewers. Thank you. The oh. Cleveland Guardians, the thank Texas you. Rangers. And the Minnesota Twins. Hate Valley Sports. Um, the MLB will broadcast Brewers, Guardians, and Twins next year. And uh, not sure about the Rangers. I think they're looking for other um, small market uh, networks that will pick them up. But uh, they're kind of getting out of the um, I hate Valley Sports uh, trap. I hate Valley Sports. Why the heck? If they're playing in Cleveland, right? And as a Brewers fan, if they're playing in Cleveland, why is it blacked out for me? Fair point. I don't know. Because there's uh, no way I'm do not know. close enough to go see that game. Exactly. Why do you do it with like, the hand? Because I had something in this one. No. Oh. Sorry I didn't keep up with the hand lore. My bad. <laughs> I'm going to throw this at you, Jay. All right. Is that all for the MLB update? That's all I have. I'm so sorry. He's I can so give us – do you want me to get okay. – I asked, I asked Alex Proctor if he wanted to do the NBA update, but uh, you don't want to? We're not talking about any teams I like. All right, We're all right. It's Celtics. it's going to be Celtics quick. <laughs> uh, not much once again for the NBA. Uh, preseason did start this past week. The Bucks game that we the game that the Bucks played, we got killed by the Pistons. But I mean, it's, it's pre- preseason. It's preseason. I, I know, but the fact that it was the Pistons that did it made me laugh yeah, so hard. I, I know. It's, it's preseason. Um, not a bunch of games played uh, yet, but the t- Celtics are two and zero. Disgusting. I hate you, Boston. Not actually, but uh, Boston's four team. Sorry. Uh, the, yeah, Bucks are 0-1 uh, after losing to Detroit, 120 to 87. We got three more games of the preseason, and then the regular season starts October 22nd. Our first game will be at Philadelphia, going against the 76ers. That's on the 23rd. That's actually. on the 23rd. So that's actually when the season starts. So for the Bucks. At least. Yeah, for the Bucks. So the season will start. Opening the day. day. Say yes. that. And also, it is opening day for something else, Liam. Good transition, bro. That is a great transition. Let's all just savor it for a second. It's amazing. Um, it's opening day for hockey. Woo! Yeah. Everybody, oh, yeah. Everybody's favorite sport, right, Jacob? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Look at this correct answer. No, football's my favorite. Uh, Sabres not- and Devils tactically, tactically jumped ahead. They started on last Saturday. It's like when uh, the uh, Dodgers and Padres played earlier this mm. season in Seoul. It was just kind of – they counted as oh, – as, Regular season games, but everybody knows it wasn't. They don't. And the Sabres sure wish it wasn't because they already lost. You know what? <laughs> that was probably too loud. Great start. Uh, great start. Picked his first NHL team. He already gets to see him lose. Attaboy. Amazing. We're, we're, we're going to win it. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> uh, there are three games today. The Blues versus the Kraken, which I do think the Blues already beat the Kraken 3-2. to have there you go. one. Yes, yeah, 3-2, to two, right? Yep. Boom, I'm good. Uh, the Bruins versus the Panthers, which live score update. The Panthers are the four goals in the first period. They they're beating the Bruins four to one in the first period. The NHL champs. The NHL, season. the defending Stanley Cup champions. It's the Stanley Cup playoff rematch of the last two years. Oh thank God. Um, <laughs> it's fun fun fact. So two years ago, the Bruins were the best team in hockey <laughs> of all time. Yes. I know. They said. Uh- so many records. And they lost the open in the first round. In the first round. Did they lose to the Maple Leafs? No, they no. lost to the Panthers. No, they so lost to the Panthers first round. It was the greatest thing ever. It was beautiful. And it was then the beautiful. Panthers beat the, the 
Maple Leafs. And, and then the Panthers. And then the Maple Leafs. It's fine. Boston the last episode's hilarious. Um, the Bruins are without their star goaltending duo, so Linus Allmark is now on the Senators, which you don't like their logo at all. I just, I don't know. It's, it's kind of boring. It, is, it's, it, it needs it's to weird. get updated a little bit. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't think anybody could do it justice. Um, and it's the Blackhawks. Connor Bedard. <laughs> uh, versus the Utah Hockey Club. <coughs> so they still the haven't Hawk debuted Club. their name or, or logo or anything. RIP yet. Coyotes. So, yes, rest in peace, Coyotes. It's always a sad day. Which, by the way, they're done. There was a, uh opportunity for them to get their, their franchise back if they could like raise interest and funds, and it has been killed. So, Dang. The, the Coyotes, you were a wonderful experiment for 20 years, and you will be remembered. Um, hockey is finally back for good, which it definitely won't end in a couple months again, like it always does every single year. A couple and months? Yeah. Doesn't it end in like June? Round. Hey, my football season only lasts a couple months for my boys, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, as of like three days ago, there's never a day without football now. Mm, that's true. Yeah, but you only get that for a certain span. For 56 you days. You gotta save For 56 you days. You get to save I'm getting <laughs> Uh, and the NCAA hockey also returned over the last week. Uh, the Badger women's hockey team stays at number one after a clean sweep of Boston College. I did watch one of the Boston College games, and they just absolutely destroyed them. Oh, heck we're, yeah. We're a good team. You know why we're a good team? Because we've scored a combined 34 goals in just four games, and their opponents have only scored two. I just two. saw that stat. That's insane. That's, insane. That's an insane stat, right? That's nuts. Um, the Badger men's hockey team played an exhibition match against Nebraska-Omaha, which, why does Nebraska have a hockey team? But you know, I'm there for it. It's I'm, a good I'm, hockey team. Yeah, it is a good hockey team. I'm there for it. It was a rink dedication. I don't remember to who, but it was the head coach of Nebraska-Omaha, and it was an assistant, a former assistant coach of the Badger hockey team. So that's, that's why they had that. But uh, the Badgers did come out ahead 3-2 to two in overtime. Like, closer yeah. than I would have liked it to be, but a lot of new. It's, we're there in pretty much the same position that we're in right now. So, wow. uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's all I got for hockey. What, do you have any thoughts on the season starting? How do you think your Predators will do? Or? Yeah, I think the Predators are going to have a good season. Um, Winning the Stanley Cup. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's the hope, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, I would like to say Bedsy's going to get 90 points. So you're a Did, Bedard? Would you? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, uh, no, hold on. No, huh. Would you like to make a bet? No, I'm not making oh! a bet. Oh! You still haven't gone yeah, through a table yet. Yeah, yeah. Bring in the table. Would you, no, would, you, would you like to make a bet, <laughs> Alex Fractor? Not yet. Let's see how tonight goes, and then I'll make a then I'll make a bet. So you. next week, can we can we promise him something? Next week, you guys will make a bet. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah, maybe. It's yeah, not maybe. a no. Yeah, but, no, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. So okay, so then are the Blackhawks like your secondary team? No. no. <laughs> he just likes Connor Bedard. Yeah, I just like Connor Bedard. Does anybody have a secondary team <laughs> by any chance? Uh, I mean, oh, I like are you are you big? No, like you know, I like some of the players on the Florida Panthers. Per like chance. who? <laughs> And they name five Florida you Panthers without look looking up Google. Hold on, I have to, Somebody look, stop I have to respond to an email. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, shoot. Uh, 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 oh, my gosh, I can't type. It doesn't matter. Buffalo Sabres all the way. <laughs> you even know a Buffalo Sabres player? No. <laughs> He'll figure it out. Yeah. Hey. Rasmus Stalin, and that's all that you need Rasmus to know. Ristol. Can you type that in for me, actually? R A S. Oh, I bet you type. Just uh, I don't have internet, so. It, oh, and your computer I, died. Yeah, I'm just suffering over here, pretty much. Did your computer died? <laughs> it it froze, and now it's back, but I don't get the internet, so. I think that's a that's a that's a good way to end the episode. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys all. Thank you guys, everyone in the in the fishbowl for helping out today, and from all of us at Sports Point, we'll see you next time.